Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the regular scheduled meeting of the Beaver Creek City Council. Before we get started tonight, we have a couple introductions. I'd like to turn it over to Police Chief. Good evening, Mayor, Council. It's uh, my pleasure to introduce our two newest officers who the mayor had the pleasure of swearing in this morning. Um, Dean English on my left, Tyler Mantee on my right. Uh, just a little bit about both of our newest officers. Uh, Dean uh, is a 2015 graduate of Troy Christian High School. He attended Cedarville University where he graduated in 2019 with a Bachelor of Arts and Business Management. Uh, he completed his Sinclair Criminal Justice Training at Basic Police Academy in July of 2019. Just last week, took his state certification test where he scored a 91 and is now a commissioned officer in the state of Ohio. Uh, prior to joining the Beaver Creek Police Department, Dean was employed at Old English Outfitters. Uh, he was also employed as a campus safety cadet at Cedarville University. Uh, from August 2016 until his graduation in May of 2019. Uh, prior to working at the campus security at Cedarville University, Dean served on the worship team, volunteered with the Iwana program at Grace Baptist Church in Troy, Ohio. Uh, Dean and his wife Natalie live in Kettering, and we welcome them to the Beaver Creek Police Department family and look forward to Dean's long and successful career with our organization. To my right is Tyler Mantia. Tyler's a 2008 graduate of Kettering Fairmont High School. He attended Sinclair Criminal Justice Police Training Academy, graduated in 2014. Uh, he's also a U.S. Army veteran. Uh, he served from July of 2008 until his honorable discharge in November of 2011. Tyler's been employed since September of 2014 with the Sugar Creek Township Police Department. Um, he's been a field training officer and evidence technician with them. He was also uh, selected the Bellbrook Sugar Creek Optimist Hometown Hero, uh, and he received an excellence award from the Sugar Creek Township Fire Department. And uh, Tyler and his wife Sarah live here in Beaver Creek, and we welcome them to the Beaver Creek Police Department family also. So I'll ask them, I'll start with Dean, if they have anything they would like to say. Uh, I'm just very thankful for this opportunity, and I look forward to a long career in the city. Yeah. Okay. I'm very thankful for this opportunity, and I look forward to a long career serving in this city. Basically, it's the same thing. Thanks for the support. And I can't wait to work with all of you. These are our two newest officers, and it brings us back to our uh, staffing of 50 sworn. So we're glad to have them on board, and they've already had a uh, full day today, so we're going to get them out of here as soon as we're finished. So thank you for allowing me to introduce them. Additional introductions we'd like to do uh, this evening. And Joe, would you come up and join me? Joe's with the uh, State Auditor's Office. And uh, Joe called me a couple month or two ago, a month and a half ago, and said he would, that the State Auditor would like to yeah. honor people that stood out above the rest of the crowd uh, from the tornado. And so I gave him a few names and a few organizations. And the only ones we have not been able to present to this date are the two lovely ladies that uh, operated the Tornado Network. And first, I'd like to ask Aisha to come up, please, and also Michelle to come up with you. And you can just stand on either side of us or in front of us, whatever you like to do. But the, uh, uh, you know, for the people that don't know, uh, Aisha started a, this tornado network on Facebook, as I understand it, right. and uh, slowly realized a little help would be nice. <laughs> and Michelle came on board, and it's just been a place that I go on a regular basis to stay in tune with what's going on. 
you've got the outreach to the community that people know where to go if they have a question. It's just been a tremendous help. And so I would like to read, before I ask Joe to speak a little bit on behalf of the auditor, I'd like to read the part of the, uh, the recognition and the appreciation from the auditor. And it says, whereas the Beaver Creek Tornado Network has, was established to coordinate, and dis coordinate disaster relief and became a critical resource for citizens, volunteers, and outside organizations to begin the revitalization process. And whereas the Beaver Creek Tornado Network facilitated a platform which allowed for citizens to coordinate and distribute resources to the community and maintain a presence, a process forum during which time of need that all we all, they all experienced. And so uh, in, in recognition, Beaver Creek Tornado Network for their leadership in navigating this inauspicious time in recent history. Now the auditor obviously has a word, way with words. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, it is, it is signed. Keith Faber, Auditor of State. And so, Joe, would you like to comment just a little bit, and then, then we'll both present things. Well, I'll just reiterate a little bit about what the mayor said. Uh, the auditors asked me to uh, contact some of the communities that have been uh, hit with this tragedy, and um, obviously Beaver Creek was one of them. And when I asked the mayor, if the first names that came out was your your two names, uh, the, the church, Be Hope Church, obviously, and uh, your city manager. And it was... Uh, in, in the right, chamber, in the chamber, yeah. in the chamber that's correct. And um, the auditor wanted to make sure that we, we recognize you all for doing that because sometimes when there's tragedies like this, things like the people that take the extra effort to go out and do things sometimes get overlooked. But we wanted to make sure that you all were, were recognized for that. And on behalf of the auditor, we'd like to present these uh, two commendations. This is high issues. All right, I, see, I did it. <laughs> Aisha. I'm sorry. I, this is Aisha's All right. certificate. There you go. Congratulations. Thank you. And this is Michelle's All right. there we go. Thank you. Congratulations. Ladies, do you have anything you'd like to say? Um, no, it's been a journey, um, but we're definitely keeping it on. Um, we've noticed the need with the community, and we've actually joined um, a group um, to help the community even more. So we're going to be here for, for a while. Yeah, it's going to be a long process, yes. and I'm sure on behalf of council, we would like to say thank you as a whole to to both of you for all the, all the work you did. So, any any comments from council that are questions? I I just like to say it's totally service above self, and so that's wonderful to see people. Um, we all know that Beaver Creek is a wonderful community, and we have great community members. But you know, when people step up in tragedies, that's where the rubber meets the road, and so we thank you. All right. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. to order the regular meeting and may we have a roll call please councilmember curran here councilmember literal here councilmember rushing here councilmember upton here councilmember van here vice mayor garcia mayor stone here do i have a motion motion to excuse vice mayor garcia second, second. i have a motion and a second to excuse vice mayor garcia all in favor say aye aye, aye. opposed same motion carries and now the next item i'd like to turn it over to councilmember curran for the pledge We'd all stand, please. I'd like to have a moment of silence for our first responders, uh, face the things that they have faced over the last several uh, uh, weeks with the uh, tornado and the uh, unfortunate uh, situation that uh, happened in the Oregon District. Thank you. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Approval of the, uh, approval of the agenda. We have it before us. Any comments? Do I have a motion? Second. Seeing none, sir, I'd like to make a motion to approve with a second. second. <laughs> I have a motion and a second to approve the agenda as submitted. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same. 
Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, approval of minutes. August 12, 2019, regular meeting. Any comments? Seeing none, I'd like to make a motion to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the August 2nd minutes as presented. All in favor say aye. 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 August 12th, I'm sorry. I said second, didn't I? Opposed, same. Motion carries. Next, uh, approval of the August 17th uh, management strategy workshop. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the August 17th minutes. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same. Motion carries. Next, August 19th, which is a joint work session with Beaver Creek Township. Any comment? Mr. Mayor, if there's no comment, I'd move for approval of the minutes. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the minutes of August 19th. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? I know I left early, but uh, I won't abstain. All right. Well, we do have another presentation. Next on the agenda is a pre-scheduled presenter, which is the Auditor of State, Mr. Joe Braden. And I would like to ask that uh, Mr. Casera and Ms. Hathaway join us down up here in the front. You going to come down? Yeah. This is my favorite moment of the year. <laughs> well, it's my honor to be here on behalf of Otter State Keith Faber to present the Otter State Award with distinction to the city of Beaver Creek. Again, as, as Zach said just a second ago. Um, this shows a lot about the city of Beaver Creek. It says a lot about the integrity of the city of Beaver Creek to receive this award year in and year out annually. Our office audits nearly 6,000 entities and to receive this award on an annual basis means a lot. As the mayor was just saying a few minutes ago, the recent tragedy shows how the community comes together and works together, all the different members of the community, and that shows that integrity. Otter State Key Faber had the chance to recognize those and and that was, a, that was a great moment, and I was glad to recognize the ladies just a minute ago, too. The criteria for this, I've read to you year in and year out over the past few years, so I'm not going to read it today, but you guys know it takes a lot. It takes every employee that you have here in the city of Beaver Creek to make this happen. Our office goes out and audits every single uh, department in your city, and they all have to work together to make this happen. It takes the council members to make this happen. It takes the mayor. It takes the city manager. And not the least at all, but the most important, it takes the finance department to make this happen. Um, it just says so much for the city of Beer Creek. And it's my honor to be here on behalf of the auditor to present this again. I, for me, it's five years. I've only been around the auditor's office for five years, but I know, I don't know what the number is, but I know you have received this quite a few years, year in, year out. And again, that just says a lot. Uh, on behalf of Otter State, Keith Faber, I'd like to present this award to you all. And Mr. Cassara, congratulations. Teresa. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much, and I would like for you to give that to, to Bill and uh, Teresa. They are the ones that... Uh, they really make this happen, so we appreciate it very much. Absolutely. We appreciate That's you guys. Right. Thank you. Uh, Absolutely. Here it goes. Here you go. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. exercise today. <clears throat> Next pre-scheduled presenter, Greta Mayer of Mental Health Recovery Board, Green County, CEO. Hello there. Hello, Mayor. How are you? City Council members, good evening. Doing well. I, do, I think you have copies at your place. Yes. Yes. To follow in the audience. I appreciate the opportunity to speak with you tonight and um, 
As Mayor Stone mentioned, my name is uh, Dr. Greta Mayer and I'm CEO of the Mental Health and Recovery Board of Clark, Green, and Madison Counties. And in front of you is our fiscal year 2018 annual report. It was recently released and I just wanted to highlight a few sections, talk about who we are and what we do, um, and give you those updates. Um, we are one of 50 uh, mental health and recovery boards or Adamus boards across the state. And we are empowered statutorily to plan, fund, develop, manage, and oversee a community-based, the public mental health and substance use services. And we exist to connect residents to care systems, and we provide pathways to mental health and substance use services. And we facilitate a delivery of quality care. Um, and those resources that we provide to um, residents through property tax um, levy dollars locally, and then we leverage state and federal funds um, for prevention services, treatment services, and support. On the inside cover, um, you'll see a letter from me to the community and the categories of services that I just mentioned are described and they're critical because they represent a whole continuum of care. When we say prevention services, you may think of school-based prevention services to keep kids healthy and drug-free with healthy coping skills and so on. Um, the treatment services, you may think of someone going for an assessment if they're having troubles in life um, where a doctor might prescribe medication that's needed or case management or other um, counseling services. And the supportive services, um, you may think of recovery housing for someone in recovery from addiction or supportive housing for individuals with mental illness, job supports um, to get people back on their feet um, and back working. Uh, those are some examples of those supportive services. And below that is an important piece that recognizes our board members. Um, just over half of our 18 member board um, is appointed by local county commissioners and the others are state appointments. And so having the local voices and lo local representation um, is, is important. And you'll notice um, Beaver Creek being represented and, and um, since uh, fiscal year 18, I've had other Beaver Creek appointees. So that's um, important for you to know and we value that. Um, another thing on the right side, this is important to see, is, is our funding sources. And you'll, you'll notice that the majority of the funds that we have to invest in prevention, treatment, and supportive services for mental health and addiction are local property tax revenue, so about 70%. Um, and I mentioned the state and federal dollars that we can leverage um, with the local tax dollars, uh, but those are really important for us. Um, so you can see that it's overwhelmingly um, supported by Green County residents, and we, we appreciate that support very much. Um, and so below the financial informa information, you'll see uh, an image of all of our system partners. So when we talk about connecting residents who need services to a care community, we're talking about beyond the nine contract provider agencies that deliver the clinical or supportive care. We're talking about working with Chief Evers and the, the law enforcement um, that he provides and oversight, working with schools and higher ed um, and other, other important um, players like local government and city government um, because all of us have a vested interest and stake in serving all the residents who need get, you know, connection to services. So um, we work with lots of um, groups of individuals to, to benefit our local residents. And um, one thing that I, I did want to point out, um, and, and it's been mentioned already in numerous times, is in the wake of, of the crisis, the tornado crisis, um, we had some um, staff, Adrian Miller was one of the leads that worked with the local EMA and the chamber and, and public health um, to provide ongoing emotional support that was provided along with FEMA and the others that were here. And what those individuals did, um, we, we leveraged some state partners and other local residents um, who are trained to be companions and to connect uh, Beaver Creek residents to the supportive services, clinical services when needed. Um, and we did notice an uptick in the crisis um, calls that were received through TCN, behavioral health, and other supportive services. So we, w we wanted to make sure that residents knew that there was a help network there and how to connect them. So we appreciate, again, the city of Beaver Creek and being open um, to lots of individuals coming in and offering help. And I, th I think the, the collaboration, obviously, with the award tonight is clear and um, the faith community and, and many others stepping up. So we were happy to be a part of that. And, and we'll, we're in it for the long haul. We know that, that trauma of any kind, man-made or natural disaster, and we've experienced both, um, really um, has ongoing effects. And so we are gonna be a partner with you moving forward with that to provide whatever support we can. 
Um, so on the back page, this may be the part of the report that you, you know, want to refer to or pass along to family or friends, and those are our contract care providers. Those are the agencies that deliver those services that we talked about. Um, and so they work together, um, and we can leverage, since we are a three-county board, we can bring in services from other communities if there's a waiting list, for example, for a Green County service. One of our neighbors in Clark County maybe has an opening and we can send residents to those services when needed. So it's an additional benefit of being a three county board is to, to draw in additional um, services to the Green County community. So I didn't know if you had any at this time. I'd love to entertain any questions that you may have. Any comments? Questions? I just would like to thank you for coming tonight and for the thank Mental you. Health and Recovery Board of Clark, Green and Madison <coughs> counties because you know, for full disclosure, I have worked with uh, Greta Mayer before, um, and the services they provide to individuals throughout the county are, are amazing. And without the levy funds that people provide to this, um, there are a lot of people that would be in crisis without the proper care. So I think it's very important that everyone realizes just how much they do um, for the whole community. And that's three, you know, Clark Green and Madison County. So I think it's wonderful that you were here and, uh, and that you provided this. So thank you. Thank you. Why don't you expand on some of the prevention things that are going on? Because I think our community really values that. And this gives you a chance to, again, share in case people aren't remembering exactly what's, what's being offered. Thank you very much for that. Um, so prevention, a lot of times you think of prevention in the schools for school age kids. So PACS Good Behavior Game, um, Botvin Life Skills are just two of um, the evidence-based, so research-based programs that show a, a tremendous return on the investment when you invest in these robust prevention interventions. And we help train teachers. So many of the teachers in Beaver Creek schools have been trained in this um, to help kids manage their emotions, being able to sit still, you know, for the younger ones, for the older ones, Ones, being able to stop and think before they act, identify what's really going on and what may be a good way to solve this problem. Um, and so it's very helpful, powerful interventions. And we partner closely with the schools. And Beaver Creek Schools, I will say, is um, are one of the leaders um, in Greene County and being early adopters in this intervention and these prevention strategies. And they have also adopted many more um, prevention interventions around suicide prevention, um, working with the um, peer mentors um, at the high school, and just, just a number of, of supportive services in addition to school-based um, intervention services. So I just applaud the Beaver Creek City Schools. Um, they're, again, welcoming to additional support. They've, they've applied for competitive grants that we've partnered with them to draw down additional state dollars. And so um, we're looking for, you know, always, additional resources for support. And, and one of the new things in the prevention arena I'll mention is with drug-free workplace. Um, there's a lot of um, businesses that are looking for healthy and drug-free workers. And when things don't go well for someone who may be developing a substance use problem, employers who may consider a second chance policy and that that could help them um, in the end retain valuable workers that they've invested in. And so this is a newer area for us. You'll see more of this coming. Um, we had a, a chamber, a cross chamber safety council training around um, the use of medical marijuana and what that means for employers. So there's a lot of hot topics around this. So you'll, you'll see more um, coming soon in the community for um, businesses around prevention as well. I, I think just our chamber is doing uh, holding something tomorrow, tomorrow. on that on that topic. Probably Fabulous. one of your programs. Yeah. Fabulous, yeah. yeah. Thank you. And yeah. I think it's great that the students at starting at kindergarten and first grade are learning that self control, so that when when they get to be in middle school, they have the personal skills to be self evaluating for what they're being asked by their peers to do. Absolutely. So thank you for introducing that to our schools Absolutely. and our teachers. We appreciate it too. Thanks. Anyone else? In that case, just thank you for especially the step up for the tornado. I mean, that is everything you do is things that you that you're programmed to do. But that is something that just seems to be over and above. You know, that's and it'll be a long, ongoing process uh, as people try to get their lives back. So we thank you for that. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right, thank you. Okay, moving on. Ordinances, resolutions, and PUDs. First is Ordinance 19-16.
This is a second reading of an ordinance to establish a new special revenue fund and fiduciary fund in conformity with generally accepted accounting principles. Is this Mr. Casera? Uh, second reading. Oh, second reading. I'm second sorry. reading. All right, this is a second reading. So this is a public hearing. Is there anyone present tonight that would like to address council on this uh, ordinance? Seeing none, we will close that. This will naturally move on to the third reading, which will be uh, the first meeting in September. Right. Next, ordinance 19-18. This is an ordinance to approve supplemental appropriations, certify additional revenue, and authorize interfund advances for the fiscal year beginning January 1st, 2019 and ending December 31st, 2019, and to amend ordinances 18-28, 19-01, 19-03, 19-12, and 19-17. Sir, you're on. Good evening, Mayor, members of City Council. Uh, you can see that we've been actually pretty busy with amending uh, our original budget, and uh, I believe these will continue for some time as we uh, start venturing off into the second half of the uh, tornado response. Uh, I'm going to just go over a couple of these things. We've already talked about some of them in the past. Uh, we freed up money in the uh, street maintenance uh, program, the 204 fund. Again, you've uh, often read that the uh, city manager talks about the silos that these are in and the money really can't be uh, utilized in, in various places. The one way we can do this, though, is uh, we save money by not doing the second round of the uh, street capital improvement program, which were the, the ones above and beyond what we had originally budgeted. The uh, amounts actually came in, the bids came in lower, freed up some money, and that was in 2004. And there was a, a project in 204 also that we were able to delay for uh, till 2020. So the question was, is how do we free up that money to be used in 203 to uh, accommodate some of the uh, tornado uh, expenditures? So what we uh, determined was is that we could transfer one of the projects, the capital projects that was in 203 to 204. You have that freed up money. We transferred a project that was similar in that uh, dollar amount and that freed up the money in 203 to allow us to maintain our fund balances and keep uh, things going in 203 while we pay some of those expenses. So what you see is there's actually uh, appropriation uh, in uh, one account and uh, unappropriating the funds in 203. So again, we have to when we bring the project in, we appropriate in 204, then we unappropriate in 203 to free that up. I know that's a lot of uh, technical accounting. Uh, 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 moving around of uh, the funds, but uh, that will seem to work and free up the 203 fund. We waited uh, long enough to, uh, as long as we could, to not advance the uh, money from the general fund to the street fund to pay for some of these uh, expenditures. We just got another batch, $158,000 worth of uh, expenditures for, again, the cleanup, which was the July and August expenditures uh, while we were wrapping it out and had the, uh, the final uh, put out date. So again, we have to pay those. And while maintaining the uh, minimum fund balance in 203, the 10%, we still needed the money to come over from the general fund. So this is the first advance that you're gonna see. And an advance is really just a loan. We anticipate getting that money back at some future time. Uh, that which is left up to the federal and state governments to uh, do that once we submit all of the expenditures. But this is the first uh, advance that we're going to be doing from the general fund to uh, the 203 to pay those expenditures. What we're trying to do is maintain all the expenditures in one fund and, again, related to the streets. And uh, obviously the safety and security came out of 202, the police for their overtime, but all the other expenditures coming out of the uh, tornado uh, a disaster are coming out of 203. So this just allocates money into uh, from the general fund to 203. We talked about that this was going to happen. We still know that we probably have $1.5 million out there of the second round of uh, cleaning up the debris, which is the chipping and then the uh, shipping those uh, um, the, the final product to an EPA site. So that will be coming down the pike, but right now we're still in the uh, RFP process to get that up and running, and they haven't really started working on that yet, so that might be a month or two down the road. So, But 
in essence. Uh, the other thing, too, is that uh, the one saving grace was that, again, conservative uh, budgeting and uh, certifications by the uh, county auditor, we actually received $264,000 more in property taxes than we had budgeted. So, again, we're going to certify that revenue, again, to help the fund balance and to pay for those expenses. So. In a nutshell, that's what all of this does, is uh, gets that process going. But again, it's, it's kind of monumental in that that advance is now started from the general fund. Because again, the street fund is at the minimum balance that uh, we have set. So be happy to answer any questions you might have about that. Uh, it sounds like a shuffle game, but the bottom line is, is that we want to use the uh, funds in the appropriate way. In, in which they were designated for, and in order to do that, we have to do these uh, transactions to keep everything in conformity with uh, general accepted accounting principles in order to get the award again for next year. I was going to say, that's, that's why you're doing all this, just to, just to get that award. <laughs> so I'd be happy to answer. I had a good time to do this, too, right after that. Go. So I asked him if he could come every meeting, but uh, he informed me it's once a year. So, uh, Any comments? No, we did go over this in a work session, so it is um, appreciated that you're being able to help us survive this with such limited budget. So, and it'll make it much more simpler when we go to request reimbursement from FEMA to have it all in one package. Yep. Yeah, I, I believe so. Yeah. Just, uh, and again, the uh, last uh, ordinance you just approved was establishing that fund to assist in that process too. Just a, a general comment and I think some clarification for those watching at home and not quite as in tune to the finances as what we might be, but all the funds, to my understanding, that we are transferring are coming from the general fund to a more specific street or, um, or, uh, or yeah, the, the street levies, street funds, um, not the other way around. The right, money's no, coming no. from the general fund to the street fund. Yeah, so yeah. my point is uh, I don't want folks at home to think we're taking money from the parks fund and putting it into the streets or from the police fund. You know, this is all money coming from the general fund going right back into where it's needed right now. That's what you would not streets. get that award next year if we did that. All right, okay. right. And that's that's a good point. Uh, the bottom line is uh, with that 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 is the only other fund that can fund the street levy fund. So again, all of those other ones are isolated and designated for specific uh, areas, police, parks, that type of thing. But the general fund is really the savings account for the city. And just to let you know, we're starting to dip. So good point. All right. Thank you. Do I have a motion? Motion to accept. Uh, Ordinance 19-18. Second. Uh, uh, roll call. Yeah, motion. Roll call. Oh, I'll do that. Oh, motion to approve. Roll call. I'm sorry. Single, single acceptance. That's what I was going to say when yeah. I read it again, but that's all. Yeah. Motion to approve uh, ordinance 19-18 by roll call vote. Still have a second. I still have a second, yes. All right. I have a motion and a second to approve ordinance 19-18. Uh, ordinance May we have a roll call, please? Councilmember Literal? Yes. Councilmember Rushing? Yes. Councilmember Upton? Yes. Councilmember Van? Yes. Councilmember Curran? Yes. Mayor Stone? Yes. Thank you. All right, next, resolution 19 51. This is a resolution authorizing the police department to accept <clears throat> the Attorney General, the Ohio Attorney General's Drug Prevention Use Prevention Grants Program funding. Oh, Chief. Good evening, Mayor, Council. Uh, before I read the staff summary on this, I just want to point out this year the Attorney General's Office saw an unprecedented number of requests for DARE grant funding, which is why you're seeing me in late August after school has already started. Uh, they had decided to, rather than not fund some of the DARE grant requests, they reduced all of the DARE grant requests. So, mm. We're not receiving what we uh, requested, but this is about 33 years in a row that we have received funding for our DARE program. Uh, so we're pleased by that. Uh, so again, the resolution allows the police chief to accept state grant monies to be applied to the DARE officer's salary for the school year. 
The grant is through the Ohio Attorney General's Office and awards 65% of the $29,303 of funding that we requested. Beaver Creek Police Department will receive $19,046.87 for the 19-20 school year. And the DARE officer teaches approximately 600 students in our school system. So staff's recommending passage of this resolution. Comments? So for 33 years, that's a wonderful achievement, Chief. So I, I don't know how many other cities have had that in the, in the state, but I know that there's always been a part of our community and, and several other communities in this vicinity. I don't know about 33 years, though, so. And this is the first time we've had a reduction? Uh, it's, we've had reductions in the past, but say. this is the most significant no, reduction no. by just receiving 65% of what we requested. Mm -hmm. But again, it's something the state is going to look at next year because of the unprecedented number of requests to see how they can fund uh, all of those requests at 100%. But they were, they were not anticipating this, and so they opted to, rather than not fund some of the programs, to reduce the funding for all of them. Thank you. All right. Do we not have people in our audience that have donated to help pay for DARE? Didn't, didn't you guys donate money for DARE? Yeah. Not you. Okay. We had a, a, a person in, in Beaver Creek who wanted, who felt that that program was so strong that they wanted to, um, in, in Beaver Creek, our police officers are really good at it. Mm -hmm. And so in Beaver Creek, it is a very successful program. In some other cities, the officer is not quite as, um, good i guess with the students is ours but it gets high ratings here and i think greta would would also say that it, she hears that it, it works well in preventing drugs and and other bad behaviors so um i'm really glad that we got part of this funding and i'm glad we've had a a person that helped in the past help pay for it too it's been a very important program for us as an organization i think as a city because i still run into individuals who are adults grown have families and they were in our dare program sure. and they remember it and talk about their dare officer who instructed them when they went through in fifth grade so it does have an impact and the dare program has changed over the years to uh, not only is it drug abuse resistance education but it's about making good choices anti-bullying messages so the dairy program is not just about the drug abuse resistance but it's about uh, life choices so again our dare officer is currently uh, officer barry wise cup and he, he does an outstanding job we, we've had outstanding dare officers over the years as far back as 1986 when we started this and so it's a it's a ingrained in our culture to be a part of the DARE program. And even when uh, cities and townships and organizations were cutting back due to the recession back in around 2008, one of the first things everybody cut was their DARE program. We, we were fortunate enough through council's leadership to maintain that program in our budget. And it, it pays dividends, and I'm proud of uh, the fact that we're still involved today and have been for 33 years. Thank you. Do I have a motion? Uh, you do. I, I'd like to make a motion. Um, one, to agree with what the chief said and what you mentioned is that these are life, life choices and what a great program. And these children will remember that deputy or officer all throughout their life um, because sometimes that's the most important person they have that they can talk to. Mm -hmm. So uh, with that, I'd like to make a motion for uh, resolution 19-51. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve resolution 19-51. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same. Motion carries. Thank you. Moving on, resolution 19-52. This is a resolution directing the Greene County Auditor to enter cost of noxious weeds and grass cuttings to the tax duplicate for the properties described in Exhibit A. Mr. Cassara is on his way back up here. 
Yes, good evening again. Uh, this is our uh, annual uh, submittal to the county auditor to uh, uh, file t uh, tax liens and uh, to file uh, assessments on properties from uh, the uh, noxious weeds and our ordinances related to uh, uh, nuisances throughout the city. Uh, most of you have already been through this process. I just want to go over it as a, a quick reminder that the ultimate goal here is uh, compliance with our code. I mean, that's what we're ultimately doing. This is the result of that not happening. And I wanted to go over quickly the steps that we take to make sure that they're aware of the uh, you know, a violation. And the fact is, is that we've gone through two or three steps before we get to this process. So. Pete, if you want to. No, you got it. Oh, I got it. There we go. So again, uh, the city receives a complaint, uh, whether or not it's uh, you know from a, another resident or staff initiated. Uh, in this in particular is talking about the uh, weeds and grass. If it exceeds 10 inches. Uh, we place a placard on their uh, property and give them five days to uh, correct the, uh, uh, the violation. And then if after the five days we go back and reinspect, if it's not completed, we actually have a contractor that we go out annually to uh, get bids on this to uh, keep the cost down. But uh, we actually initiate the uh, effort for the outside contractor to go out there and uh, take care of the uh, exception. And then uh, at that point, we invoice them. So again, what we invoice them is the contractor amount that's already a negotiated rate for us based on the size of the property. And we added an administrative fee of $100 to the property. Again, that's the disincentive for not uh, taking care of it. If after all that, we invoice the uh, owners of the property that are on the uh, tax rolls, and again, if we do not uh, receive payment, then we add another $25 assessment fee for this process. And then according to uh, Section 97.16 in our Code of Ordinances, then we're allowed to place the uh, outstanding invoice on the tax duplicate. In addition, the auditor also charges 5% on top of that. So you can see how this builds up pretty quickly. And we take a lot of time and effort to try to get a hold of these folks to let them know that it's out there. And rather than incur all these fees, uh, if they want to just pay the invoice, that'll uh, get us there. So after all that, we go through this process and we actually uh, place the assessment on the tax rolls. We have to do that by September 11th for the following year. Again, the key here is, and I always like going through these statistics, even though they seem fairly boring, is that the fact is, is that we're trying to get compliance. And again, we have a pretty good rate of getting compliance. We actually are at uh, hovering about 70%, which is pretty good. Uh, we actually adopted the abandoned foreclosure and vacant property registry in uh, 2016. So if there was vacant uh, properties out there, they were required to uh, register with us so that we knew who the contact was so that, again, we could get these things taken care of and in compliance without going through all of this process. You can see that it was uh, pretty uh, instrumental in 17. It's starting to uh, waver a little bit here as the uh, number of uh, foreclosed and vacant properties has actually decreased. And uh, this is not as bad as a problem as it used to be. And you can see uh, down at the bottom, we're actually keeping the average cost you know, per the lot to actually have it mowed uh, as low as we possibly can, again, by going out to bid every year to make sure that we're getting a contractor that uh, is reasonable and uh, within the market constraints. So, but again, I, I just wanted to emphasize this portion of it because again, the mission in code enforcement is compliance, uh, not assessment. So, yep. So in summary, uh, we actually do have 39 parcels here that need to be assessed, and the total assessment amount that you saw on the uh, ordinance itself is 10,918, which is by far the highest we've ever had. Uh, the um, 
we put the assessments on that. We get the uh, settlements. Usually in the first uh, half of the assessment of settlements will be in um, March of next year is when we get that. And again, that money goes into the general fund to offset the cost associated with code enforcement uh, in the planning and development department. So. Uh, and again, what this resolution does is request the county auditor to place these assessments on the upcoming uh, tax duplicates. So I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Uh, we actually are very good at collecting this. I think uh, the previous year we actually billed uh, $5,700 and we got almost $5,600 back. So again, we're uh, uh, doing a pretty good job of, and the system seems to be working, although we still have outstanding about $9,500 worth of assessments from, and again, the county auditor doesn't tell us where they're from or when they're from, but from previous years. So uh, again, the process seems to work, and it gets the desired results, and uh, what we're uh, looking for is approval of the resolution. Thank cut above the rest, right? Exactly. That that was going to be my mind down here at the bottom. That was so my closing statement. So you took that away from it. <laughs> took that away from it. All right. Anything else? Do I have a motion? Hmm? Okay. So in the area that was hit by the tornado, we're not we're being more sensitive about this. Um, grass. Yeah, and I think weeds. Uh, we've sent out a uh, detailed letter concerning that whole area and how we're going to handle it. And In kind of a more uh, friendly, not friendly, but cautious way. Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. More sympathetic to yeah, those yeah, that yeah, yeah. And yeah. again, trying to reach out a little yeah, bit Yeah, there, there we go. We, there we, we go. have uh, given every opportunity to those in the tornado area. There are some issues that it may be in a tornado that aren't tornado uh, related that we are still addressing, but we're giving all the benefits of the doubt where possible. I appreciate that. Uh, therefore, I would move for approval of Resolution 19-512. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve Resolution 19-52. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same. Motion carries. Next, liquor permits. Chief, you're back up. I feel like I'm in competition with Mr. Casera. <laughs> yeah. It is, back and forth. He's, He's got, got one Mr. up Tomer's on me. not coming up. <laughs> He's got the award tonight. He's one up. So, <laughs> But uh, congratulations to Bill you and got Teresa two new officers. and the finance department. <laughs> well, we'll have ours again coming up. And, but again, congratulations to Bill and Teresa and the finance department for the outstanding job that they do. Uh, I have a request for a new liquor permit uh, for Club Oceana LLC. This is the third request for a thir the third different liquor permit uh, for this location. The Ohio Division of Liquor Control sent us notification. This is referencing a new D5J permit for Club Oceana 4429 Cedar Park. The records checks required by the Ohio Department of Commerce Division of Liquor Control were conducted on the shareholders uh, for this request, and staff is recommending this application request move forward without comment. Thank you. Do I have a motion? Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to accept without comment. Second. I have a motion and a second on the table. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same. Motion carries. Thank you. Next is council time. How about we start with uh, Council Member Upton tonight? Thank you. Um, only comment I had, uh, I want to give a big shout out to, to Bill and Teresa, as was mentioned, uh, you know, with the, the award. I, I believe this is our eighth. Uh, Mr. Casera, maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong. It's our eighth. Uh, so, wonderful job uh, year in and year out. And, uh, Proud to say that I've, I've sat here at this table for all eight of those. It's a, a great job, and you make us look good. So appreciate that. Um, secondly, I just want to acknowledge that uh, you know, in our minutes, uh, we had a joint meeting with the township trustees last week. I uh, appreciate all of our joint meetings that we have with the various community uh, boards. Uh, that uh, it was uh, very well. Uh, info informative meetings, the word I'm trying to say, uh, with presentations by the fire chief as well as uh, 
our staff and some others. So it uh, was good. Mr. Kretz is here tonight as well. I acknowledge him in the audience and say thanks. Uh, thanks for hosting last week. It was a blast. <laughs> I don't know about blast, but it was good. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Bob left early. How <clears throat> well, then it really did get. It really got good. It then. was so much fun. <laughs> Council Member Curran. I would just echo Council Member Upton's comments concerning our joint meeting. I thought it was very constructive, and uh, they really showed uh, how uh, the community can work together. Uh, it's just another consistent example of this. Absolutely. Council Member Van. No report. No report. Council Member Rushing. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And um, to piggyback off Council Member Upton, you know, of the 6,000 entities that are audited every year, I believe it's less than 5% that receive the Auditor of States Award with distinction. And I'm sure the percentage even drops for entities that receive it year after year. Um, so something that Council Member Upton said best makes us all look uh, good. Um, the only thing I'd also like to add is I um, had the opportunity to, to attend uh, uh, ethics training um, this past week. But I do also want to give a shout out to uh, Kim and Todd of the Parks Department um, who were also in attendance representing Beaver Creek. Um, there are a lot of uh, folks um, from Fairborn since it was hosted in Fairborn, um, but I do want to recognize uh, the staff members I saw attending that uh, that training. That's all I have this evening. Thank you. Council Member Lederal. Thank you. I guess that's just another example of our collaborations, so we do a good job at that. Um, I just want to thank the uh, staff of the Beaver Creek Chamber for hosting uh, their uh, Lunch and Learn. Lunch and Learns are very popular now. It's one of the, where you can go have lunch and, and learn about a topic. Tomorrow's topic is about having marijuana in the workplace, and it's actually the, the uh, speaker is from the Bureau of Workers' Compensation. So that's um, really important because as the laws change, mm -hmm. as employers, we need to understand what we are expected and what the expectation is of our staff. So I think that's extremely important, and I appreciate the Chamber uh, bringing that information to all of the business owners in the area. Um, second thing, I'd just like to remind everyone that the In Touch is out. It's one of my favorite magazines, and I hope that uh, you look through it. There's some great information. There's some information about the charter amendments and uh, some upcoming information. So uh, please, uh, I always look forward to that this quarter. And again, it's a collaboration between the township and the city. And so again, we, you know, we collaborate with as many entities as we can as a cost savings to the um, to the community and to uh, have that good camaraderie within the agencies in the area. So that's all I have. I thought of something I could announce. Uh, the first Wednesday of September is, is September 4th, and our city manager and staff are going to be talking about uh, what happened with the tornado for Beaver Creek Women's League in the morning. And those meetings are open to the public. And so if you want to hear the details of of what happened and, and how all of our staff and first responders were involved. Uh, the Beaver Creek Women's League meetings are at uh, Peace Lutheran Church and they are open to the public as a, as a public service for updating the community on issues of importance. So put it on your calendar, 9.30 or 10.30 is the speakers. So the meeting's at 9.30. Uh, Councilmember Upton, you want to add something, please? I was just going to call out uh, our wonderful popcorn festival. I will let uh, Mr. Landrum take the full full credit for it, but uh, I just want I want to make sure our volunteers that are working the popcorn festival uh, get the recognition that they deserve, um, as well as making sure all of our citizens at home know that it's coming. It's popcorn festival time. So uh, with that, I'll turn it back over. All right. All right. Moving on. Mayor's report. And I don't have a whole lot this evening, but. Uh, uh, I do want to mention a couple things. One uh, has already been covered, and that is the chamber event, and that's at Harbor Chase, and I believe it's at 1145. Yes, sir. So uh, I plan to attend. This is the uh, marijuana subject that we were talked about earlier. I also want to invite you all to come out to Xenia uh, Thursday at 7 o'clock. That is the annual Beaver Creek Xenia Challenge football game. And uh, I had to, uh, had to give the trophy back to Xenia last year. So it'd be nice if we got it back this year. But you're all welcome to come out and join me uh, and Mayor Sarah uh, from Xenia.
Today we had, it was our uh, regular mayor's lunch as well. Uh, the four mayors around the area, three in Greene County and, and the mayor of Riverside, we get together once a month uh, for lunch just to, just to chat about what's going on. And we all have the same, similar issues and that sort of thing, but it's, a, it's a, an enjoyable uh, lunch. Uh, another, uh, well, I think that's about it. I was going to say, uh, I'll talk to you about that later. All right. I think that's all. We'll move on to the city manager. I guess I'm getting a talk to later. No, <laughs> no, no, no. no. <laughs> um, I do want to congratulate. Not appointed anyway. <laughs> congratulate uh, Mr. Casera and Miss Hathaway. You know, uh, Sit the city uh, staff, you know, we're, we're small and statured, so to speak, as far as numbers. And uh, so the finance department isn't a big finance department. You go down there and you could stand in one location and see everybody. So it's a small department. So they, they do such a good, good job at everything. So congratulations, well deserved. I uh, just wanted to um, piggyback on uh, Zach's uh, pop, the popcorn festival. You know, it's, uh, it is coming up 7th and 8th. Uh, Saturday it opens at 10 uh, to 8 p.m. with the 5K run at 8.30 a.m. and Sundays 11 to 6 with the car show registration at 9 a.m. Uh, over 200 booths, foods, festivals. If you've never been yet, you gotta go one time. Uh, hopefully it's not, uh, it's unlike, not somebody, everybody knock on wood. It's not like last year with uh, all the rain and torrential rains last year. Uh, but uh, the city will have a booth, parks department, police department, we're all there, so please stop in. We got volunteers that uh, we're all we're, we've uh, um, volunteered to staff the tent uh, the entire time. We'll have posters up of uh, projects and of information handouts. I'm sure police always have goodies to give out to kids. Uh, so please stop in uh, to the booth uh, police uh, city tent uh, to see us. Uh, additional information, this is not a city uh, event, uh, so this is uh, by the Popcorn Festival Committee. Uh, but So if you have any questions, it's 602 Corn uh, or the info at beavercreekpopcornfestival.org. Please contact them for any additional information. And just one uh, another thing that has snuck up on us very quickly is uh, uh, Labor Day. The uh, offices will be closed September 2nd and observance, uh, so happy Labor Day. Of course, any emergencies, please call 911, but for non-emergency, you can contact the police department at the 426-1225. All right. Well, thank you. We're all being a little con condensed tonight. That was okay. good. All right, moving on, citizen comments. Is there anyone present this evening who would like to address council on any issue? Please come forward and give us a name and address. Good evening. Uh, my name is Tom Kretz, 1477 Holland Court North. Um, I come before you this evening um, as a professional courtesy um, to inform each of you personally that I have declared myself a write-in candidate as Beaver Creek Township trustee for the November 5th election. Um, as you may know, Mr. Roberts uh, submitted his petitions to the Board of Elections on April 19th, nearly four months ahead of the uh, deadline. Um, earlier this week, Mr. Roberts learned that two of his three uh, signature forms that he turned in were rejected by the board for a typo on the second page. Consequently, his name will not appear as a certified candidate. He will not be on the ballot, and he's ineligible as a write-in candidate. Um, based on these circumstances, and given that Mr. Roberts was running unopposed for a township trustee, I believe he deserves at least the opportunity to be considered as a nominee with others for the position he otherwise would have certainly been elected to. My running as a write-in candidate could create that opportunity. While this contributed to my decision, my primary concern is what is in the best interest of Beaver Creek, our community. Our trustees are responsible for an organization with a $25 million budget that provides fire and EMS services to approximately 50,000 residents um, and businesses, along with a host of critical planning and zoning, roads and other critical services to the unincorporated portion of the township. As you heard at our recent joint meeting between the city and township, the Beaver Creek Township has made tremendous strides over the last six years. We have gone from 400,000 in the red on the general fund to 400,000 in the black. And we've increased the township's investment income, uh, interest income from less than 10,000 to over 150,000 annually. 
Um, those two changes alone resulted in a positive $1 million change uh, to our general fund. Under, uh, over the last six years, essentially, we implemented private sector uh, best practices across nearly every department of the township. When faced with a residential and commercial development explosion in both the township and the city that created the demand for a fifth fire station that, that came in nearly one million over budget due to skyrocketing construction costs, rather than absorb that added cost, we implemented a first, the first virtual fire station 65 in the history of Beaver Creek. We have been committed to extending and uh, holding true to our 10-year funding plan. These are just a few of the accomplishments um, over the last six years that I've been on the board. I'm committed to Beaver Creek Township and our community, so much so that my wife and I recently purchased a new home in the unincorporated portion of the township. We are semi-retired. Our kids live out of state and, and other parts of the country. Um, and so we could have moved anywhere, but we chose to stay here. This is our hometown. We love Beaver Creek. Um, I believe in running local government no different than I would run a $100 million company, uh, and I've done that. Uh, I'm passionate about transparency in government and sound conservative fiscal discipline. I believe in providing best-in-class service to our taxpayers. My goal is to preserve and build upon all that the township has worked uh, to bring about over the last six years bolster an even stronger relationship with the city, the county, and Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. And I thank you for your time this evening. Uh, one last comment, tomorrow is my wife's birthday. We've been married 30 years. I'm the luckiest man on the planet. Thank you. Happy birthday Happy back here. That applause was not for you, Tom. That was for your <laughs> lovely wife now. She loved one for 30 years. <laughs> All right, anyone else? Seeing none, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. I have a motion and a second to adjourn. All in favor say aye. Aye. We are adjourned. Thank you.